Um, first off, I'm just your average everyday person. My name is Tanya. I am uh, a wife. That's my husband, John. I'm a mother. Anybody know this young man? Hi. Miles Gould. I am Miles Gould's mom. I own a 21-year-old marketing business called Tag Source, and I'm somebody's best friend. Okay, so really what I want you to know is how my background impacted me to one day grow up and get on a career trajectory of becoming an author. Uh, I was born in northern Indiana, and we lived below the poverty line. We were very, very poor. Things weren't always very good at home, and so eventually the state of Indiana stepped in and they took me away from my family and placed me in foster care. Books taught me that there was a life that was tangible and it was within my reach. All I had to want to do was reach out and grab it. Samuel T. Moore of Cordomagore is about a land and sea fiddler crab who wandered onto the sandy white beach of Cordomagore, and he wanted to stay there and he wanted to live there forever but he had to overcome some obstacles first. He had to basically build a house before the tides came in and swept him back out to sea. He had to do that in a matter of time. He had to do it while there were naysayers and kind of bullies mocking him in flocks, uh, the seagulls, and he had to beat the time crunch before the great tidal wave threatened his hut. Samuel Timor of Cordomagore was first released on iTunes as an interactive iPad app. So my book is actually, I get to boast as an author that my book is actually available in more formats than the average author. My book is available in audio, it's available uh, in hardcover and softcover, it's available also as an interactive app, and it will one day um, be released in Latin American uh, Spanish, and I'll tell you why, and that all involves that adventure that I'm on. I knew that the publisher would actually help me publish the book and animate it and get it up for publication, but I also knew that they're not going to help me sell it. So I needed this great idea to sell my book. And so one day I woke up and I said, aha, I've got it. If you can name a star in the sky, then why can't I find an island somewhere, maybe out in Vanuatu or the South Pacific or anywhere in the world really, why can't I name an island Cordomagore? I started researching some islands for sale out in Latin America, in Central America, off um, to the right of the Caribbean coast, basically along this way. Um, I actually w uh, started researching Nicaragua. I came across a very interesting uh, fact as I was researching the people of Nicaragua, and that was one third of all the children in Nicaragua drop out of school before they reach the sixth grade. One third of all the children in an entire nation of children drop out of school before they reach the sixth grade because they have to go to work, earn money for the family, because the country is a developing nation, um, because it's impoverished, uh, because they have younger siblings at home, so their parents, they have to stay home and watch their younger siblings while their parents go work in plantations or wherever. One third of a nation's children drop out of school before they reach the sixth grade if they ever enroll in the first place. My son, Miles Gould, when I read that fact, was a sixth grader here at SRTMS. And I get goosebumps just saying that. And I thought, okay, I want to make my fictional place real, but now how do I match my passion, writing books for children, and selling books for children, and marketing books for children, how do I take that passion and match it with a purpose. And my purpose was, I want to help those kids in Nicaragua. Because why? Because my path, my background, everything I told you about, because I'm those children, right? I basically started out with nothing. Um, but, children, but, but, but children in America have it a little easier in that we have teachers, and we have a great educational system, and we have people mentoring us and helping us along the way. In Nicaragua, those children don't have the same benefits that we do as Americans. Nicaragua is a developing nation. It's not like the United States of America where we have help and support and a great welfare system. Nicaragua is exactly the opposite. You can't possibly know um, about that country until you actually see how impoverished it is. So at that moment, my passion, selling books, marketing books, writing books for children, connected with the purpose. Now I wanted to make my fictional place real, and now I wanted to find an island, and now I wanted to put that island to use to keep 
kids in school in Nicaragua. So I went on this adventure. I went to Nicaragua. I ended up on the Caribbean coast. There was an island for sale, a five acre island on the Caribbean coast of Nicaragua. A storm front moved in. I swear we almost died. Waves were crashing all around us, just like in the book. Water, sea salt was spraying, and, and um, we weren't sure we were going to ever make it to that shore. We get to the shore, and we're walking around this island with giant waves crashing. It was just such a beautiful place. Um, this five acre island and there was a doctor on the boat with us who actually walked up to me and he was holding a maimed animal and that maimed animal was um, in trouble. He had a buoy wrapped around his body but he couldn't quite tell what it was because he had his neck kind of pulled backwards safely. Um, he was a doctor, he knew what he was doing. There was a buoy wrapped around his body and he's holding it out to me. I've got to save this seagull on Port of Isn't that interesting? There are seagulls in my book. Well, I get back to shore after seeing that beautiful island, and there's a gentleman named Randy Petit um, who basically says, um, who learns about my idea of making a fictional place real to actually bring tourism to Bluefields, Nicaragua, creating an ecotourism venture that basically will generate revenues for all the poor children of Nicaragua and be able to deliver supplies to them and keep them in school and do everything in our power to do it. He looked at me and he said, you're looking at the wrong island. And I said, really, how so? He said, you need to be looking at 29 acre Hog Key in Bluefields that's owned by Ambassador Francisco Campbell. And I'm like, okay, I'm on a five acre island. How am I going to finance a five acre island? Let alone, how am I going to finance a 29 acre island? Hey, put it into perspective. You guys wanna hear some numbers? A five acre island in Nicaragua costs a half a million dollars. A 29 acre island in Nicaragua would cost millions and millions of dollars. So most people would walk away and say, yeah, I can't look at that island, right? Well, I didn't. I went, I went and I stood on that island and I said, why not? My process and throughout this um, process of finding Puerto Magor has all been about thinking bigger, right? So the next thing I'm in, I know, I'm on a 29 acre, biodiverse hot spot, I'm on this island. The next thing I do is I'm meeting with the Ambassador Campbell's family. Um, I'm talking to them about my idea of, of the project and wanting to have it work um, to keep kids in school. Uh, and they said um, that they would very much like to align with the Finding Court of Magor project. And I said, wait a second, what does that mean exactly? Is the island for sale? No. Is the island for lease? No. We'd very much like to align with the Finding Puerto Magor project through a joint partnership agreement. So I basically had an island handed to me on a silver platter by Ambassador Francisco Campbell and his family through a joint partnership agreement on the, the Finding Puerto Magor project because the project aligns perfectly with their family's goals. We'll be working on in, in infrastructure throughout the whole island. It's a living, breathing, biodiverse ecosystem, so there are all sorts of programs that we hope to align um, educationally with. We hope to be able to um, have you log in and actually see things like artisanal fishing, cultural diversity. Did I say I was on an adventure? I ended up in Washington, D.C. in the Nicaraguan Embassy by doing what? Dreaming. Dreaming. Shemi, Chi, Mo, Ra, Porta, Macor.